Hi, good afternoon. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's taking care of themselves. Welcome to Aries Healing um, on YouTube. I wanted to um, start doing these forecast videos for you guys. So I used to have a, and my name's Marley Nadine, by the way, for any first time people to my channel. I do astrology, Reiki, and um, another a number of different healing modalities. So I wanted to do something that I used to do back in the day. So let's go back to 2016. I was on a local radio station and I had a show called Marley's Metaphysical Perspective. And on Marley's Metaphysical Perspective, I would start um, the show off with the numerology of the day and the planetary forecast for the week ahead. And so it was kind of like mocking like when people do, um, you know, the traffic jam forecast on the radio or something like that. I just wanted to put my own spin on it. So here I am for the first time on Aries Healing on YouTube with my planetary um, forecast. So let's go into it. Um, and first off, I'm just going to read off where everything is placed currently. So currently um, we have... A, the sun in Virgo, we have Mercury in Virgo, we have Venus in Cancer, we have Mars in Aries, then we have Jupiter, oh lordy, okay, okay, and then we have Jupiter in retrograde in Capricorn, Saturn retrograde in Capricorn, Uranus retrograde in Taurus, which I just made a video, like a detailed video of, um, Neptune retrograde in Pisces, um, Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, and Chiron retrograde in Aries. So we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six. Six planets are currently retro right now. And Mercury, I believe, one of these other planets is going retro. One of these other planets is going retro. So, but anyways, as of current, we have six planets in retrograde, which is very intense. But it's also like when you see retrogrades, it's going to be like kind of um, a time for you to like go over stuff, redo stuff with like a slower pace and more of like an intricate perspective. So now I'm going to go through. Um, the different planets, including the sun, and where they're at, and why they're there, and what's the effect of them while they're there, when they're there. So here we go. Okay, so um, starting off with the sun in Virgo. So we know that Virgo is um, the sixth, it's, it's the sixth house of the zodiac, and the sixth house deals with like routines, day-to-day -day, um, dealings, like schedules, you know, everything that... Um, needs metic like uh needs meticulous like where you have to be meticulous you have to pay attention you have to like that's what Virgo kind of represents not kind of represents it rep represents that but the sixth house is also the house of health so um like I said just taking care of yourself your daily routine your workout routine things of this nature so when Virgo is also the sign it's um symbolized by the virgin it's supposed to be Virgo the virgin um and so when you think of a virgin, you think of something that's pure, you know, um, something that's beautiful, um, something that's um, perfect almost. Um, and it's, you know, in as perfect as perfect can be. But you know what I mean? Um, so also Virgo is the perfectionist. Um, so when Virgo, uh, when the sun is in Virgo, people tend to get more kind of on their game, on their A game and start to pay attention to things a little bit more, paying more attention to detail, and just figuring out um, things, but very detailed. Like, you're not going to be as loose as you were in the summer. This is definitely harvest season for a reason, okay? So, now, um, the next planet we have, Mercury in Virgo. So, Mercury is actually extremely comfortable in Virgo, because Mercury is... Um, one of the ruling planets of Virgo. And a lot of people don't know that because um, Mercury deals with Gemini and also Virgo. So um, they have commonalities. Um, 
not too many on the on the on the face value level, but they do have commonalities. Um, Mercury is the uh, planet of communication. Um, like in general. So there's a number of forms that we communicate on nowadays. We communicate through the internet, we communicate through the phone, you know, we communicate in so many different ways, whether it be like all these different apps and all the different things we have, that's what Mercury rules. So when Mercury's in Virgo, you're gonna be, you're gonna have very much attention to detail and not only attention to detail because the sun's there, but because Mercury's also there, it's gonna make you um, be able to speak um, you know, what you want to say, what you want, and get the results of what you want based off of Mercury being there in Virgo. And like I said, it's very comfortable because it is a ruling planet of Virgo. Um, yeah, so, uh, and you could be a bit nitpicky, but you're definitely going to get stuff done with Mercury in Virgo. Okay, now we have Venus in Cancer. Uh, cancer is the nurturing sign of the zodiac. It's symbolic for the mother, as Capricorn is the opposite and symbolic for the father. So um, Capricorn is the fourth house. The fourth house has to do with stability and foundations and things of that nature. That's why it represents the mother, because the mother really is like the stability and the nature of the home. Um, the nurturer, excuse me, of the home. So um, yeah, so Venus is the lover. So Venus is into, Venus is not also in the love, like let's just go into it. So Venus is the planet of luxury, love, and everything like fly. Like Venus also represents art and, you know, really just rich things, but it also does represent love because love is like the richest of the riches that you can have pretty much. So um, you're going to have empathy and compassion for mankind and you're going to be delicate with yourself and others during this time. And I mean, if you think about all the things that I'm saying, we're seeing things happening in real time in our world right now where people are being more compassionate and people are, um, you know, having more empathy for other people and what they're going through. Um, so that's like really reflective with Venus being in Capricorn. Okay. Now, the next sign we have is Mars and Aries. So I just wanted to point out, like, we have Mercury and Virgo. We have um, Mars and Aries, Saturn and Capricorn. Um, so I just thought that was interesting because there are a few planets that are literally located in their ruling signs. So the planets that rule certain signs, they're actually in the house. So a prime example is the Mars and Aries um, placement. So Mars is... A productive planet. It's also an aggressive planet. Um, you know, it, it rules like the industry, like the industrial world, like steel and metals and things of that nature. So with in um, with it being in Aries, you can be aggressive and forceful, um, but also crazy driven, active, exciting and motivated. So depending on, you know, which level you come in on it, that's the influence that Mars is going to have over Aries. And it's going to give you like a drive, like a driving force. But also like with the other planets, it's like you can be driven and be compassionate at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, so that's the beauty of this placement. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper. We have Jupiter retrograde and, and Capricorn. And these are our bigger planets. Jupiter's one of our further, it's our closer planet, but it's also one of the biggest planets. Um, and Jupiter um, deals with expansion, luck, growth. It's the ruler of Sagittarius. And right now, it's retrograde in Capricorn. So Capricorn, that would be the second house to Jupiter. Jupiter's not very comfortable in the sign of Capricorn because Capricorn is a very strict sign. It rules the 10th house of like representing the father and uh, work and your place in life and um, like what you choose to do for a living. So Jupiter is like fun. Like Jupiter is like expansive and it thinks of like big things and has big goals and big aspirations. So if you could think of like a child, let's say if Jupiter was a child and Capricorn was the father, like the Jupiter child is gonna feel really uncomfortable around that Capricorn father because the Capricorn father is legit so strict. <laughs> so um, Jupiter, it's, it's not so comfortable. 
and its expansive quality is slowed down in Capricorn. So if you have any big, big goals, like you might see yourself like taking a back seat or you might see that you've put some stuff off for a period of time recently based off of, you know what I mean, um, Jupiter being retrograde in Capricorn. Um, so, I mean, there's good things with everything. You can't always be fast motion. And that's why the planets do what they do when they halt and they go backwards and they kind of give you a chance to review stuff. So on to the next planet. So now we have Saturn retrograding Capricorn and Saturn is actually the ruler of Capricorn. So, um, it's actually perfect there. Um, in retrograde, I took notes. Let me look at my notes. Um, in retrograde, um, Saturn comes with hard life lessons. So in reverse, it's kind of crossing its T's and dotting its I's um, before it's moving into the sign of Aquarius and rolling up its sleeves to rebuild a foundation. So also, um, if you are a Capricorn, you're probably going through, like, if you're a Capricorn and you're around the age, like, 28 to 30, you're probably going through your um, Saturn return, which is um, every 27 to 28 years, Saturn comes back to your house and teaches you like all your hardcore life lessons. So if it happens to be retro in Capricorn right now and you are a Capricorn, then you're like on the tail end of like learning all those lessons and moving the fuck on. Um, so just take everything um, with a grain of salt uh, in this stage and... Um, yeah, just move forward in the best way possible. It's very hard with Saturn retrogrades. I'm not even going to front or just Saturn transits in general, but retrogrades can be a tad bit easier. But um, <clears throat> also um, another thing, another theme that you can see popping up with um, Saturn retrograde and Capricorn on the broader scale, like when it comes to the world, is you'll actually see um, employees of a company um, complaining about unfair treatment or people getting exposed um, for doing wrong things. And even us, if you can think about it, it's been a really long time since the people have revolted and said, you know what, fuck this, this is wrong. And like, you know, really speaking our voices on all platforms. And that's where we're at right now. That's kind of like Saturn Capricorn energy. Like we're speaking up and we're saying, hey, this isn't fair. This isn't right. And it's being on all kinds of fronts. It's being on fronts, um, in our political system, um, like, because there's even political people outing other political people when they never would, like, really shit on each other like that, except for policies, and now they're, like, getting into people's personal lives and just shitting on people for just whatever reason, so um, I think that that has a lot to do with uh, Saturn retrograde and Capricorn. Okay, so now I did a whole video on Uranus retrograde and Taurus, but if you didn't catch it, then um, I'm just going to give you a little brief description of what that does. So um, it takes up Saturn retrograde in Taurus, excuse me. Uranus is a planet of, um, oh, Lord, I lost my train of thought. But anyways, so Taurus is a sign of stability, luxury. Um, it's a fixed sign. So having um, Uranus, Neptune, and Taurus, it actually allows you to take opportunities as they come. But don't get too overwhelmed um, during this period because things might move a little slow. Um, and if I was you, I would practice self-care. Like the Uranus retrograde Taurus is screaming, practice self-care, take care of self, don't over push, don't be too hard on yourself. Okay? Now, on to Neptune retrograde in Pisces. So this is another like comfortable placement. So uh, Neptune is actually, Pisces is a weird sign because it has two rulers. So it has co-rulers. So it has Jupiter and then it has um, um, Neptune that rule over the sign of Pisces. And Pisces is in the 12th house, 12th house dealing with subconscious, unconscious mind, deep thoughts, like, you know, um, imagination, illusions, things of this nature. So Neptune being in its home sign um, very comfortable, but retrograde. Um, also, Neptune is the ruler of fantasies and illusion and escape and creativity. So it's teaching you right now to see past illusions and have um, that have held you back and manifest and align with your new reality. And we can literally see that right now. Um, we're seeing past illusions and Neptune is a generational planet. So 
if you think about it, like even right now, we're seeing past illusions of government. We're seeing past illusions of this whole world, um, things that hold us back and things that are not productive for us and things that are not, um, you know, pushing us towards being our best self. Everybody is starting to see. Um, and that is exactly with what retro um, Neptune retro Pisces is technically doing right now. OK, now we have Pluto retro Capricorn. Um, Pluto retro crap, uh, Pluto, excuse me, represents transformation and rebirth and Capricorn, like I said, is the 10th house of um, career and your place in the world. So right now with um, and since it is rebirth and transformation, healing and change in your personal life and in the wider world is going to take place with the Pluto retrograde Capricorn. Also, um, radical transformation and focused on inspired actions and focusing on solutions. So this is just like a really good time to tune in, turn out, you know, and go for your goals, but without being so hard on yourself, without being so like guerrilla unit with it and actually having compassion for other people and coming from a perspective of like, how am I helping in, in the world? Like, what is my role that I'm playing and how is it helping the greater good, but also, you know, helping me and helping me to create, like I'm creating what I like, I'm doing what I like, but also it's beneficial for others. You know what I mean? That's the time that we're in right now is what I feel like. And then lastly, we have Chiron, retrograde Aries. And Chiron is the wounded healer. It's also represented by a centaur similar to Sagittarius, but it's not a planet. It's an asteroid, but it has a lot of planet. It's, I mean, a lot of planet. It has a lot of, um, it affects us in a major way. And it is in our solar system, like going through the signs just as the other planets are. Um, and so the teaching of Aries in, um, excuse me, Chiron retrograde in Aries is that, um, what wounds you also heals you. So like, it's just like the things that hurt you the most are the things that are going to lead you to the best parts of yourself. Because once you shake off that hurt or that pain or whatever the case may be, um, like something, a new you is going to be birthed through whatever traumatic experience that you went through. So that is the Chiron and Aries placement. And before I log off, I wanted to just say that um, there's something else that we have to worry about um, for six months every year, for six months to a year. They're called the North Nodes. And what happens is, is we have like, we always have a sign at the North and the South um, every year. And that would be the node. Um, in the North Node right now, we have the sign of Gemini. And in the South Node right now, we have the sign of Sagittarius, which is really interesting, interesting for me because I'm a Sagittarius. And I'm like the person who thinks of like the big picture. I always see everything on a grander scale and I always think big and dream big and all these things like that. But with the North Node in Gemini, that's what we are supposed to aspire to be like. And Geminis are very... Um, meticulous. Um, they pay attention. Uh, they pay attention to details and they take things one thing at a time. So that's what I'm in a stage of learning right now, as well as the rest of the world. We're all learning how to take things one step at a time and kind to not like get too much in over our heads and stop like always scheming out on these grandiose things and kind of starting small to get more. Um, so North node in Gemini, South node in Sagittarius. So once again, I'm going to run through the planetary forecast, um, and let you know where all the signs are. I hope this video was very helpful to you. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and like now. Um, I really appreciate you guys and let me know some of your feedback and if you can relate to any of these planetary changes happening right now and if they are affecting you, let me know. Okay, and we're going to run through the list one more time. Sun in Virgo, Mercury in Virgo, Venus in Capricorn, Jupiter retrograde in 
excuse me, Venus in Cancer, Mars in Aries, Jupiter retrograde in Capricorn, Saturn retrograde in Capricorn, Uranus retrograde in Taurus, Neptune retrograde in Pisces, Pluto re retrograde in Capricorn, Chiron retrograde in Aries, the North Node in Gemini, and the South Node in Sagittarius. So I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I'll speak with you guys all soon. I'll be posting a video next week sometime. Really appreciate you guys. And thank you for watching my channel. And pretty soon, I will have my new elixirs uploaded on my website. And you guys will be able to purchase. Okay, so thank you so much for watching the Planetary Predictions. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.